This year, we have seen a sudden acceleration of incredible monitors from ultra wide to ultra fast. This year, we've seen the launch of LG's first dual mode OLED monitor, as well as Samsung's G8 OLED gaming monitor with some pretty impressive anti-glare technology. And since these monitors are both fairly close to each other, both in sizes and specs and even price, and to help those who are asking, I thought it would be fun to do a comparison to see if you had to choose which one would be best. And of course, that will depend on your situation and what you need it for. But I'm going to try and cover all of those bases here today. Now, this video is sponsored by Govi. More on them in just a moment. But let's start off by comparing specs by specs here. Now, the LG Ultra Gear Dual Mode is a 32 inch 4K OLED monitor, which runs at 240 hertz and also 480 hertz at the push of a button, which then drops the resolution to 1080p just to, to maximize the performance you get out of your games. Whereas the Samsung G8 is also a 32 inch 4K OLED monitor, which just runs at a fixed 240 Hertz refresh rate, but it does have a very, very clever coating on it, which we'll get to in just a moment. Now, both of these have a 0.03 millisecond response time. Both have AMD FreeSync and NVIDIA G-Sync. They both have two HDMI 2.1 ports, one DisplayPort, 1.4 ports, and both have broadly the same pixels per inch. But there are some differences. Now, one is brighter than the other. One uses slightly different panel technology. One has a whole smart TV interface thing going on. And the speaker and audio setup is also different. So starting off with the obvious, they look different. Now, the latest generation of Samsung OLEDs have this sleek silver color that's fitting for both a gaming setup or in an office. There's also a simple vent at the top, ports are down the bottom, and a circle of LEDs on the back as well. Whereas the LG goes for a very marginally but more aggressive look with this black casing and then LED accent lighting down the back. Ports again are down the bottom. However, LG does have this handy cover that then tidies away some of the messy cabling, which is a nice feature to have. Now, both of these monitors have LEDs on the back, but I would definitely just call them decorative, like you literally cannot tell they're on right now. Now, even though they have modes that let you replicate the colors on screen, on the lighting on the back, they're still like far too dim to see even when placed up against a wall like this, unless you are literally sat in pitch black darkness. And even then it could be a struggle. And most days, most gamers are probably sat in a room that's, you know, lit up like a Christmas tree with all your gaming PC LEDs and probably other LEDs around the room as well. And so I've always recommended that if you do want to have that, you know, cool backlighting effect, then pick up a separate light bar or LED strip, which is where Govi, the sponsor of today's video, actually comes in with their brand new AI sync box kit too. So there's a few parts to this. Now, first, there are two light bars that you place on the desk on either side of your monitor. The second, there is an LED strip that's designed for 27 to 34 inch monitors that then wraps around the back of the screen. And thirdly, there is the sync box itself where the lights then connect in via USB-C, which then also has four HDMI 2.1 inputs and then one HDMI 2.1 outputs. So you basically hook up your devices like your you know, Xbox, your PlayStation, your PC, and this box then passes through those signals to your gaming monitor. But now the lighting can react to what's going on in your gameplay. Now it supports 8K 60 Hertz and 144 Hertz and has support for matter as well. So it can be hooked up to practically any smart home system. Now, when I'm not gaming, I actually just use them as, you know, general backlighting for my monitor, but just check that it will work with the monitor you're using. Since, you know, flagship models like the 240 Hertz 57 inch G9, the LG and the G8 in this video won't work at the full native resolutions and refresh rates. So you might have to either drop the resolution or drop the refresh rate to get those modes working properly. But they are by far the best way to get good, bright lighting behind your monitors if that's what you're looking for. So you can pick up one down below using the link in the description below. But back to the monitors themselves. Now, both of them have the newer slim stands, which is really, really nice to see. So they don't take up a huge amount of desk space and they do both have support for vaser mounting. So if you want to throw one onto a monitor arm and I won't waffle on about my favorite monitor arm, I'll link that one down below as well, but you can do that if you wish. Now, in terms of the screen itself and the colors, when playing games, there isn't much noticeable difference between these monitors. I think you'd be hard pushed to see much of a difference, but the LG does have a marginally higher peak brightness, but again, it's very, very minor difference here in experience during gameplay. And that's kind of surprising here because the Samsung is a QD OLED, which should give it better color, better brightness, but the LG wins here at least on brightness instead as a W OLED panel. But generally speaking, the Samsung will perform better in dark rooms and the LG will perform better in brighter environments. And that brighter peak brightness also might be a great reason to get the LG 
over the Samsung if that's something that matters to you. Now, one thing that definitely does touch some nerves though is the anti-glare coating on both of these gaming monitors. Now, most people want to avoid any form of, you know, matte coating on gaming monitors because it impacts the display quality. But these new generation anti-glare coatings are honestly some of the best I have ever seen. Like to me, these new coatings are so good that you don't even notice they're there. There's no noticeable degradation to the image quality. But when you do notice them is when, of course, is when they handle those reflections. Like both of them do a great job at minimizing reflections and neither of them are anywhere near as bad as some screens. But I would say that the Samsung glare free tech they have in this monitor is some of the very, very best you can get. As you can see here, reflections are noticeable less on the Samsung G8 when directly compared to the LG, but they are both very, very good in terms of anti-glare reflection here. But the big debate I see online is all about OLED burning, which many people actively avoid buying OLED monitors because of it. But at least the good news here is that both of these monitors cover burning within their two year warranty period. Now this is something that recently been changed by LG who didn't previously cover it. So just to be aware that that recent change has just happened. But that aside, both monitors have features that actively try to avoid burning by shifting pixels around and keeping things moving so they don't get stuck. Now one of the big differences though is the software. Now LG's monitor runs, I guess you could call it a basic monitor like system with on-screen controls to adjust well, everything. Now you do get a couple of shortcuts where you can add your favorite settings for easy access. But outside of that, there's not much else you can do. Whereas on the Samsung, like love it or hate it, you get the full Tizen smart software as well as an included remote control. Now this definitely sets the Samsung apart from the LG. Like the remote control is more of a TV remote than a monitor remote. And with the smart Tizen interface, you can stream shows, you know, watch live TV, connect to Windows PCs, Samsung mobile devices, Samsung Dex, even stream games directly to the monitor without the need for a console. The only problem this introduces is that the Tizen interface can be quite slow and a bit laggy at times, particularly if you wanna just quickly change inputs. But if you are someone who actually wants this, you know, sort of half TV, half gaming monitor experience, then awesome. It's well worth checking that one out. Okay, so let's get down to it. In terms of gaming performance, how well do both of these monitors perform? Now, for the past year or so, every monitor I reviewed on this channel has been put through the exact same tests, the same games, and from the same gaming PC. Now, it's currently a top spec gaming PC, although I'm now waiting with basic breath as to how well my bank balance copes with the 5090 release, whenever that comes out, which is rumored to be quite soon. But for now, it is a 4090 card, as well as an Intel 149-900K processor, 32 gig of memory and all the usual fast SSDs and stuff. Now this is a little bit more complicated than normal, but I tested some of the most popular games on their highest quality settings. So you know, Epic, Ultra, Extreme, whatever those settings might be. And those games are Call of Duty Warzone, uh, Fortnite, Overwatch, Helldivers, Forza and Cyberpunk. I think that's all of them. Now, maybe let me know if you think of any other games that should be like permanently added to that future lineup and I'll look to include those in future videos. But we did test on both 240 and 480 Hertz on the LG, as well as testing Call of Duty on competitive quality after some feedback from the last video we made. So I'll be sure to add those in each time we test now. So first up, we have Helldivers 2, where I hit 102 FPS on the Samsung and also the same on the LG in the 4K mode. But I was then able to reach 130 FPS in 480 Hertz dual mode, which was running at 10 1080p. Now Fortnite next, and that was 130 to 140 FPS on the Samsung. Same again on the LG, but then 160 FPS at 1080p mode. Cyberpunk was 75 on the Samsung, but then 101 FPS on the LG, and then 211 FPS in 1080p. Warzone reached 200 FPS on the Samsung, which is weird because I only got 100 FPS on the LG in 4K and then 190 in 1080p. I think there's some weird settings going on there. I need to investigate a bit further. And Forza Horizon 5 was 170 FPS on the Samsung, same as the LG, and then 240 FPS in 1080p on the LG. And the king of all FPS, forgot this one, no matter what screen you're using, Overwatch 2 at 200 FPS on both the Samsung and the LG in 4K, and then a huge 530 FPS in dual mode. Now, it is probably fairly obvious here, but you basically get the same results with both monitors, apart from a few kind of skewed results here, which I'm gonna look into more in future. When they're both in 4K, because it's the same resolution, same size, same resolution, but the LG, of course, has the edge 
if you want to put it into that dual mode to switch, you know, 480 hertz. Now, one thing I will say here is that when switching between the dual modes on the LG, not all of the games played nicely. Like quite a few of them, you needed to properly shut the game down, then relaunch it so the graphic settings would apply properly. So just be aware of that. And they both perform pretty similarly for productivity. Like the pixels per inches PPIs are practically the same. There's no issues with like seeing the pixels unless you literally like eyeball the monitor close up. There's no KVM support, although you can use the USB port on the back of both monitors to add additional two USB ports, although technically you're only gaining one because one is taken up to connect the monitor to the PC in the first place. So only one real additional USB kind of port there. But broadly speaking, in terms of productivity, they both work the same. Like neither of them have any advantages over the other really. Like both have two HDMI, one display port, so none of them offer anything like USB-C, Thunderbolt, power delivery, like nothing like that on either of these two screens here. And other than some issues with switching between the dual mode refresh rates again on the Mac side of things, both of them will do a great job. But one area where they are different in quite a big way actually is their audio because LG has built-in speakers, which actually play through like the, the front of the screen. It's a really surreal experience and really difficult to like show you how they sound through a YouTube video. But the sound quality you get from the LG is like hands down much better than the Samsung screen. It's a much like richer, more rounded sound compared to the Samsung, which just sounds, I guess, like really tinny and thin with no bottom ends. So the question isn't really which one is better here, but which one is better for specific situations. So I would say that the LG is best for someone who wants a great monitor for like daytime productivity, but can then switch into this like beast of a competitive gaming monitor at night. Uh, and also, I guess this is my opinion here, but potentially for someone who doesn't have the very top spec gaming PC, because you know, if you do, I personally found it better to play games at better quality graphics and resolution than playing them at the much lower resolutions where you, but you could hit those higher frame rates. Now the Samsung makes sense if you want something that's you know good for work and good for play, but also as more of a media TV center with you know smart apps, live TV, even the smart home integration, which you can control with like Alexa as well. So yeah. Those are the two options. Huge thank you to Govi for sponsoring this video. Don't forget to check out their new AI SyncBox 2 on the link down below, and I will see you in the next video. Cheers, bye-bye.